The question of extraterrestrial life has long been a focal point of discussion when broaching the mysteries of the universe. Despite the tireless efforts to scan the starry expanse for any indication of life beyond our world, what revelations have we achieved thus far? Recently, in 2022, a telescope in China recorded an anomalous signal that exhibited a highly restricted frequency range at 140.604 MHz, a level of accuracy that is not commonly attained through natural means. The signal triggered a widespread investigation into the origins of this transmission. The source of the signal was quickly postulated to be emanating from the general vicinity of the exoplanet Kepler-438b, which is situated about 470 light-years away from Earth. With a radius just 1.5 times that of Earth, it's well within the class of planets known as super-Earths. Adding to it, its location within the habitable zone of its host star suggests that liquid water could exist on the surface of the planet, providing a potential environment for the emergence and sustenance of life. Therefore, Kepler-438b is a prime candidate for the astrobiology research study of exoplanets as a potential home for alien civilizations. The likely transmission from the planet was intercepted by the 500-meter Aperture Spherical Telescope named Sky Eye, situated in the Gizhou province of southwest China. The telescope is specifically engineered with the objective of search for extraterrestrial intelligence or SETI in mind. With a colossal diameter of 1600 feet or 500 meters, it's no surprise that it's the largest telescope in the world and can boast the capability of capturing 40 billion observations per second. Given the expansive scale an unparalleled sensitivity of the telescope. It was immediately inferred by Chinese authorities that the signal from Kepler-438b was of extraterrestrial origin and represented a manifestation of alien intelligence. China's Ministry of Science and Technology even reported that their astronomers had discovered several instances of potential technological signatures and indications of extraterrestrial civilizations from beyond the Earth. The claims spread like wildfire, disseminating throughout Chinese state-controlled media and the Chinese social media sphere on Weibo before being reported by the international press. But then, all of a sudden, the story disappears. The report is mysteriously expunged without explanation, almost as if it had never existed. Consequently, numerous theories were proposed by an international community of astronomers. With the most prevalent explanation being radio interference. Dr. Werthemer, a prominent SETI researcher at the University of California, rebutted the claims, asserting that the signals were nothing more than radio pollution generated by earthly sources, rather than conclusive proof of extraterrestrial life. The issue of radio interference has become increasingly pressing. With the exponential increase in electronic devices among the human population, coupled with the ever-growing number of satellites in Earth's orbit, this leads to significant discrepancies in instrument readings, making it imperative to carefully evaluate and filter out these interferences 
before any conclusions can be drawn. The scenario is not uncommon and has led to a multitude of false positives in the past, leading to the growth of skepticism towards such signals among the scientific community. And it's not just some random scientists. Even the renowned American astrophysicist Dr. Frank Drake, known for his famous Drake Equation, has been fooled. Back in 1960, he recorded a weird signal when he had aimed a radio telescope at a pair of stars and believed that he had made a groundbreaking discovery, only to later eventually realize that the signal was a mere stray antenna emission. And in 2019, astronomers in southeastern Australia spotted a signal beamed to Earth from Proxima Centauri, the nearest star system to our Sun, which sits roughly 4.2 light years away and is believed to be home to at least one potentially habitable planet. The team was conducting a 26 hour long survey as part of the Breakthrough Listen Project, a $100 million effort to find alien transmissions using telescopes globally. They picked up a five hour long flurry of radio waves and out of the four million signals they recorded, only BLC-1 stood out as unusual, both for its length and its peculiar wavelength. The team then eliminated the possibility of interference from satellites or other human-made aircraft, but the ultimate origin of the signal had remained a mystery. Until a few years later, when the researchers conducted a more thorough examination of their initial data. This time, they discovered that their automated sorting program had previously overlooked several signals that bore a striking resemblance to BLC-1. The BLC-1 and those look-alike signals were components of the same radio source. And that radio source was likely something on the surface of Earth, probably within a few hundred miles of the Australian telescope. Since the signal never reappeared, it's possible that it was emanating from a piece of malfunctioning electronic equipment that had either been deactivated or was undergoing maintenance. The team surmised that the signal's appearance during that five-hour observation of Proxima Centauri was likely a fortuitous coincidence. Moreover, this is not the first or the second instance of a banal piece of human technology being mistaken for alien hardware. In a similar vein, another famous set of signals once believed to have originated from extraterrestrial entities detected between 2011 and 2014 were subsequently determined to have been generated by scientists heating up their meals in a microwave. But that's the thing for SETI. It's a tricky business. You've got to sift through a lot of noise to find the real signals. Scientists have always contemplated the possibility of constructing a telescope on the far side of the moon as a means to circumvent the increasing radio pollution on Earth and the interference caused by the satellites in orbit. Right now, it's totally normal to be a little skeptical when you hear about a new alien signal being detected. After all, We've been burned by false alarms before. But that's just how science works. You have to keep an open mind and keep searching, even if it means sifting through a lot of false leads. Who knows? Maybe one day we'll finally find that one smoking gun that proves we're not alone in the universe. A century ago, the sky above was clear of human interference, but the technology to take advantage of it did not exist. Conversely, in a century hence, 
The sky may be so saturated with human-made noise that this opportunity may no longer be available. The present moment may be a fleeting opportunistic window in which to conduct the search for extraterrestrial intelligence from Earth. In fact, many experts in the field of SETI believe that we are on the cusp of a major breakthrough. With new technologies and advancements in telescope capabilities, we are able to survey more stars and scan for potential signals with greater precision than ever before. This new optimistic mindset for SETI has reinvigorated the search for extraterrestrial life, inspiring renewed optimism in the face of the long-standing conundrum between the profuse possibility of the cosmos and the scarcity of tangible evidence for life beyond our planet. This discrepancy between the vastness and antiquity of the universe and the apparent paucity of intelligent life forms beyond Earth, commonly referred to as the Fermi Paradox, has been a source of perplexity for scientists for a considerable period of time. The paradox takes its name from the impromptu lunchtime musings of Nobel Prize winning physicist Enrico Fermi, who, after contemplating the conundrum, is famously said to have exclaimed, So, where is everybody? Scientists believe that not finding aliens is normal, due to the fact that only a fraction of a percent of the 200 million stars in the Milky Way have been surveyed. The detection of extraterrestrial radio signals, which is considered as one of the key methodologies in SETI, is a formidable task that requires sophisticated technology and advanced scientific methodology. The task was never expected to be easy. But it's not just about the technology, it's also about the approach. Some scientists, on the other hand, argue that we may need to rethink our methods and consider alternative forms of communication that extraterrestrial civilizations may be using. The possibility also remains that if alien civilizations are sending us or inadvertently leaking signals across the vast expanse of the cosmos, they may not be encoded in radio waves, but in ways that our current technology is not yet advanced enough to comprehend. It won't be surprising if our current approach to SETI is misguided. If one examines the history of SETI, the original ideas proposed around 200 years ago were things like building big fires on Earth, or installing some big mirrors that reflect sunlight to the Martians, or even making some mile-long right-angled triangles to show aliens we know about Pythagorean theorem. Nowadays, we look back and say those ideas were naive. So what's to say that 200 years from now, people won't look back at us and ask, why didn't we use tachyons or subspace communication? But for now, we can only work within the constraints of current knowledge and technology available to us. Today, despite the disheartening reality that the signals they have detected have an earthbound origin, SETI astronomers remain steadfast in their belief that humanity is not alone in the universe. With an estimated trillion planets in our galaxy, many similar to Earth in size and composition, the potential for the emergence of intelligent life is high. And they remain optimistic that one day, amidst all of our own radio noise, we may uncover something truly extraordinary. The first contact may not happen within our lifetime, but it's only a matter of time.